I used to be so scared about the fact that I had to make this huge career decision at a time where I didn't even know how to drive. Hey bestie, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about some brutally honest college advice because we do not sugarcoat anything on this channel. Subscribe for more college content and study tips and be sure to click on the notification bell and set it to all so that you do not miss out on any future uploads. Let's begin. Now, one of the most difficult things that you have to ask yourself is, should I follow my passion or be a practical person when choosing my career or course? Well, first, you need to ask yourself, are you really willing to make your passion a career? And will that hobby still be as enjoyable if it's your career? Let's just say you love painting as I do and you want to become an artist. Right now, you're only painting when you're feeling creative and inspired. But when you decide to turn it into a career, you're gonna have to paint even when you don't feel like it. In that case, will your passion still be as fun or will it start to feel like a chore? Because when you monetize your hobby, it's not really your hobby anymore, it's your job. I'm also a firm believer of security and backup plans. Let's just say you want to go into the fashion industry. Instead of creating an Instagram and a blog and hoping for the best, you're better off going to fashion school and getting the internships, connections and skills you need in order to step into the industry properly. If fashion school isn't secure enough for you or your parents, then there are still two other options. First, you can study something else, like accounting or law. Every single company, regardless of any industry, needs an accountant and a lawyer. Plus, if you decide that fashion isn't something that you want to do in the long run, like you change your mind halfway, you still have so many other opportunities and options for you to consider. Second, you can choose to major in the topic that you're interested in and then minor in your backup plan. Personally, I feel that the best choice is to choose a practical degree, then get a good job, use that extra income to fund your passions. My mom has a friend that studied law and he became an extremely successful lawyer, retired really early and then now is a full-time photographer traveling around the world. If you really can't bring yourself to study what you don't really like or you just don't want to go to college at all, then that's fine as well as long as you're willing to work extremely hard because crossing your fingers, loving what you do and hoping for the best is not going to pay your bills. Unfortunately, I know a few people that didn't go to college and are extremely successful, so you can do it too. Next, how to pick a college. But before we get into that, SPM students, please listen up. If you're not an SPM student, please skip to this time. Edukaji is offering this amazing 3-month program for SPM students where you'll be receiving live, interactive Zoom classes taught by experienced teachers who have been very accurate in predicting topics that came up for previous SPM papers. You'll also be getting notes for every single subject and so much more. So if you sign up before 30th of April, you can get 20% off. And not only that, use code FEI10 to get an additional 10% off. So that's 30% off in total. The link to sign up and all other information will be in my description box below. I have a little bit of a different opinion when it comes to choosing your perfect college and university. For me, I feel that it's best to first consider the people and the environment. Then, the overall rankings, the rankings in your specific subject, and then the student employability rankings. I used to think that overall ranking was the most important thing, but I've come to realize that the environment is actually more important. You'll be spending the most important years of your adult life in this one area. The reason why I said that the overall rankings isn't as important as you think is because it won't guarantee you your dream job or even a high paying job. In fact, unless you are a STEM student, your results don't even matter. It's the connections that you have. Anyway, so it's really important that you pick a university that allows you to meet a lot of different people and also have lots of fun because these three to four years of your life is probably the last few years where you don't really have a lot of responsibility. It's sad but it's true. Someone did ask me why I picked Australia over anywhere else like the UK and why did I not go to Harvard or any other amazing colleges in America. I would love to go to the UK and America for my master's or PhD, but have you seen Australia? 
Melbourne has been ranked as the most livable city in the world for many years now. Go to Google, Reddit, The Student Room or any other student forums in order to get unbiased and honest reviews about your college and university. Then now you have to consider all these rankings. This is extremely important because you want to go to a good university but that university also has to have excellent resources for your specific subject. You also want to get hired after you graduate, hopefully that's what you want. <laughs> so you need to consider the employability rankings. Your uni has to have a good reputation with employers. Next, what should I major in and what course should I study? Do think about all the career options that that specific course or major offers and the long-term effects of that career. For example, you don't have to become a lawyer if you want to study law. You can basically do everything except relax. Just kidding, not really. <laughs> so even though law will open doors for many opportunities, you need to consider the fact that it's an extremely high stress and highly competitive environment. But the most important thing is to tell yourself that you have nothing but time. You're still young and graduating one or two years early isn't gonna make a difference. So if you don't like what you're studying or you just change your mind, then change your course. I used to be so scared about the fact that I had to make this huge career decision at a time where I didn't even know how to drive. But my dad told me that he doesn't understand why we youngsters are so eager to grow up and so eager to work when at this age, we have nothing but time. This is the time for us to make mistakes and change plans. So do it. Trust me, after hearing a lot of advice from older people, they say that they rather be happier doing a low-paying job than be miserable in a high-paying job. But then I guess some people prefer to cry in a Lamborghini than laugh in a Toyota, so it's up to you. Another advice that I have for you is to set your priorities straight. So An advertisement might play in the next few seconds, so if you want to support this channel, please do not skip the ads. Thank you! Surprisingly, a lot of you guys actually asked me about relationships, clubbing, alcohol, hookup culture, and everything in college. What I have to say to that is, always remember that you're at college and university to get an education. Of course, you should have fun, make memories, make mistakes, but never lose sight of your number one priority, which is your studies. If you want to be in a relationship, go ahead. If having a relationship is going to shift your focus away from your education, then you're probably not mature enough to have a relationship in the first place. Don't put any of your energy into drama, toxic friendships and all of that because those things are temporary, okay? Your education is forever. Convincing yourself that life is... I hit my mic. Convincing yourself that life is short, we're all gonna die anyways, that I'm gonna forget about it in 5 years. These are not excuses to do stupid stuff because... Well, I mean, we I mean we have to have like some interesting stories to tell our children, right? But no. Should I go overseas to study and how can I afford it? Because unfortunately, studying overseas is really expensive. Number 1, if you have really good results, typically the university will offer you a bursary, which is basically a discount on your tuition fees. It is what I received. Number two, another option is that you can go for scholarships. It is your responsibility to look up for the scholarships, but what I can tell you is that you need to look out for the bonds. Bonds is just a fancy way of saying how long you have to work for the company that sponsored your studies. I didn't apply for any scholarships because the ones I was interested in had a really long bond length of like more than 5 years and the CIMB scholarship which is the one I really wanted had a bond length of over 8 years. Of course the advantage is that you'll be guaranteed a job offer once you graduate and your studies is technically free but I didn't want to be tied down to one company for that long of a time. So this is something you have to consider but then again most people don't care because the companies are usually really huge and established so it's a really good job. But if you aren't eligible for a scholarship or a bursary, the next best option is to apply for a local university but in a different state. You'll be getting the study abroad experience but you're still paying in your local currency which is a great advantage because for us Malaysians, everywhere is expensive. Next, what are the differences between college, university, and high school? 
Well, how do I put this nicely? No one cares about you in college. No one is gonna care if you hand in your assignments, if you don't hand in your assignments, if you attend class, if you don't attend class. It's all up to you. That's why I really recommend getting a planner. I'll just link mine and all my other essential stationeries in the description box below. You'll also need to be very, very independent because they'll expect you to learn most things yourself. So your number one best friend and enemy will be your discipline. Comment down below a purple color emoji if you've made it this far. Be sure to subscribe and like this video because it really helps me out and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!